One. At the ripe age of eight days old, my mom's obstetrician, Dr. Dewey, carried me from her arms and into the plain white loom that subconsciously terrifies all little boys. <laughs> Tiny scissors in hand, he peeled back my... No. <laughs> I'll be firm with the details. I am neither Jewish nor Muslim. This should be important. I was raised in conservative southern Illinois. This is more important. Two. Ouch. <laughs> Three. <laughs> when God transgressed Abraham's wishes, and Abraham saw fit to make Ishmael with Hagar, God decided to give him a new covenant past the whole, your stars will be like stars in the sky, and your babies are going to come, there are going to be so many like little desert people. <laughs> Maybe this ritual was punishment for Abraham not birthing sweet baby children with Sarah, or to keep him from going a little bit too far when he extracted sand grit from his foreskin every day. Either way, at 99 years of age, Abraham took the knife to himself, and little Ishmael, and all of his servants. This must have been uncomfortable on many levels. Four. <laughs> According to a recent study done by the World Health Organization, between 54 and 80 percent of all males born in the United States since the 1980s, in spite of being 4,000 years removed from this covenant, have their foreskin sliced off by some doctor they will never see again. In spite of the fact that God said that it was just Abraham's kids to do this, and in spite of the fact that there are only about 3% of the population in the United States that's Abraham's kids. We perpetuate this practice based on a faith doctrine, stealing boys' right to choose what happens to their body. Five. In my masculinities class last semester, a girl tells us how she thinks uncircumcised penises look shady. <laughs> is culturally constructed. We live in a society that feeds parents of boys skewed information about cleanliness and transfer of disease and does not warn them of the rare but still horrifying risks associated with circumcision that include buildup of scar tissue, loss of feeling, slice of the urethra, complete mutilation, and subsequent amputation of the penis due to slip of the hand with tools like six stones, knives, electricity, Clamps, razors, scalpels on, cirque sheets that look like flypaper, bound in plastic restraints like hostages, anything to immobilize little Jacob, Joseph, David, hold him tight and draw him closer to a God he may or may not come to believe in. Seven. In one of my pastor's many tangents a few weeks ago, he tells the congregation how at eight days old, he took each of his heavenly little boys to the hospital to have them circumcised. And by a Jewish doctor, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> in spite of the fact that Paul wrote extensively in his epistles that circumcision was not necessary for Christians, my father, family, pastor, hold on with bloody fingers to this ritual prescribed only to Jews and Muslims. My problem with this practice is not the perpetuation of it inside its constituent faiths. Rather, it is the enforcement of it on boys outside of Grandpa Abraham's lineage who never needed a knife. Eight. When Abraham circumcised himself, he did so with full knowledge and awareness of what he was doing. God promised him protection and children like stars in the sky and the grains of sand that irritated his eyes and glands daily. This happened during a time when distinction had to be made against neighboring tribes and low health conditions, but today I stand before you a circumcised Christian male who shines not like plasma, nor desert sand, who never had a choice in the matter. I don't wear a Jewish star around my neck. I know no words of Arabic, but conservative Christianity carved me into this tradition like a hostage, hanging by the edge of a razor. 